and welcome uh, Shinichi Takagi. Uh, to this very stimulating uh, workshop. Thank you very much. So um, actually, there are so many TFET papers, so therefore I don't say many words on the uh, details of principle. But uh, actually, uh, the one strong concern is the uh, uh, the uh, uh, influence of the any defects or tail states or ill phase states and the impact on the uh, substitution swing because the uh, the low S factor of the T effect uh, can be guaranteed by a kind of energy filtering effect due to the overlapping of density of states. Uh, thinking of the uh, reality of the T effect, actually there are so many critical issues and clearly the current level with the uh, S factor less than 60 millivolt is still too low, meaning that the average S factor is still too high. Uh, this is a, the uh, quite uh, big uh, problem and the, uh, also uh, it is a little bit difficult to realize the low S factor and high ion simultaneously, especially uh, for uh, silicon based TFET because of the, uh, some material limitation. So therefore, uh, um, uh, our the concern is the some uh, optimal choice of uh, source and channel materials, including the uh, type two heterostructures look like look like this, uh, with the uh, appropriate uh, band gap and the effective mass. Uh, this is one thing, and also uh, source junction formation is very critical. Uh, the, especially the PN junction type TFET need uh, quite steep uh, source impurity profile uh, to reduce the uh, tunneling distance and also as I already mentioned low defect density is very critical uh, actually the, always the uh, such steep uh, impurity uh, introduction in the uh, materials can create some extrinsic defects. So therefore, source engineering is one of the key issues to realize high performance TFET. So therefore, uh, our present approach uh, summarized here. Um, the material system is uh, listed here. Uh, for type two heterophase, uh, germanium strain silicon, and also 3,5 uh, working, and also, uh, the homo, as the homo channel material, uh, we are also working on the engine garm arsenide. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, source PN junction engineering is a key. And the, uh, actually the uh, low defect density and steep profile must be realized at the same time. Uh, for germanium strain silicon t uh, we are using the um, in situ doping of bottom into germanium, which seems to be successful. On the other hand, in Jimgar uh the ion implantation has a big trouble and difficulty in realizing the low defects and steep profile. So therefore, we introduced the very naive uh, solid phase diffusion of uh, zinc, uh, which is interestingly uh, effective in uh, making uh, junction in a TFET. Uh, the reason is summarized here. Uh, actually, the zinc diffusion in 3.5s are very well known uh, mechanism, and the interstitial zinc is a, a main diffuser of the uh, uh, P type impurities. Uh, inter interstitial zinc uh, is dominate, uh, determined by this uh, balance equation. Uh, this is the uh, substitutional zinc concentration. This is whole concentration. So therefore, actually, by increasing uh, substitutional zinc, whole concentration increases. So therefore, this is very strongly dependent on the whole concentration. Uh, that's why the uh, interstitial zinc diffusion is strongly dependent on the whole concentration. Turned out that diffusion constant of the zinc is proportional to the uh, zinc concentration, the square of the zinc concentration. Uh, this is very interesting nature because uh, this, this is very naive uh, simulation of the uh, zinc profile. 
uh, with uh, three different uh, model of the uh, the uh, diffusion constant of the zinc in 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 Jumgar uh, If the zinc concentration is uh, diffusion constant uh, diffusion uh, constant is the independent of the uh, zinc concentration, uh, very gradual, well known uh, error function type uh, profile is observed. However, diffusion constant is dependent on the zinc uh, square or the, the uh, proportional or square dependent. Uh, profile looks like very uh, box type profile because simply you can easily imagine that the uh, zinc can quickly diffuse in this region but the zinc concentration decreases the diffusion constant is very low so therefore suddenly stop the, the kind of the, the diffusion so therefore automatically very steep profile can be realized by this inherent nature of the zinc diffusion into the uh, engine gar marcenite Actually, this fact has already been known and they already uh, described in this old book. So therefore, uh, we simply apply the, uh, so, uh, the uh, SOG, uh, the zinc doping, uh, the zinc doped uh, SOG was used to, uh, as the uh, source of the solid phase diffusion and the spin on uh, SOG are deposited and the just anneal to introduce the zinc into the substrate. Uh, this is a zinc profile. Uh, uh, red one was the uh, estimated, uh, evaluated by SIMS, and the, actually this is a comparison uh, with the uh, IO implantation. We try to optimize the uh, implantation energy, but the still very, uh, the uh, load profile is observed for IO implantation. Uh, in contrast, uh, simple zinc diffusion provides a very steep uh, profile. Actually, the simulation is suggesting this line, and I, we are a little bit skeptical of this measurement because of the very close to the uh, limitation of a resolution of the SIMS uh, analysis. So therefore, the real, real profile might be much steeper. But anyway, very steep profile can be realized. And the, this is the just a pin junction uh, uh, IV characteristics, and uh, we can get the uh, uh, pretty low of current for zinc diffusion comparison with the uh, ion implantation. So therefore, uh, by using this simple diffusion uh, technique, uh, we can realize de this defective uh, junction with the very steep profile uh, can be observed, uh, can be realized. And simply we apply this technique to fabricate the uh, N-type engine gar mass night plan, planar type TF, TFET look like that. And uh, the, this is a zinc diffusion region, and the, uh, actually uh, the gate, uh, simple uh, tantal aluminum uh, gate stack is used. And as a drain, we, we simply use the uh, nickel engine gar mass night uh, metal source drain. And the, uh, finally, the device structure is look like that. And the uh, Performance is uh, the kind of this and the quite high on-off ratio is obtained because of the low of current uh, among the uh, three five T fits actually, and the S, uh, minimum S factor is a 64, a little bit higher than the 60 millivolt, but uh, still uh, not bad uh, value for a three five T fit, and also quite good uh, saturation of the IDVD characteristics can, can be obtained here. Uh, the important point is the uh, temperature dependence because the many uh, papers already revealed that the uh, trap assisted or, or any other um, uh, the uh, uh, not, not essential current component is dependent on the temperature. So therefore, uh, the, the, the uh, lower temperature dependence suggests the uh, good TFET performance. Actually, we uh, measure the, uh, the temperature dependence of the present devices, and the, we see some temperature dependence in this region, but uh, still the S-factor has the uh, weaker temperature dependence showing here. Actually, this, is, uh, this has a good contrast with the very strong temperature dependence of the of the, uh, uh, the uh, IO implanted uh, TFET. So therefore, clearly, this weaker temperature dependence suggests the uh, 
the uh, uh, lower defect density included in the uh, source P plus N junction. Uh, this is a 3-5 result. Also, we are working on the uh, germanium strong silicon TFET. The structure look like that. Actually, the germanium silicon TFET has been already demonstrated by uh, UC Berkeley uh, Professor King Group and also uh, Dr. Mantor Group, Yuri, uh, uh, <coughs> realized the silicon germanium strong silicon uh, TFET. And also, we, we just combine two structure to enhance the uh, type two band lineup like, uh, look like this. Uh, by using germanium source, a balance band is going up, and also by using the tensile strain in a channel, conduction band edge is going down, look like this. So therefore, effective uh, band gap for tunneling uh, is reduced. Uh, the lower effective band gap can be obtained by combining two materials. Uh, also, the in this case, we glow the germanium by MBE on the strain silicon. Actually, the strain is better. Uh, pro, uh, the provide the uh, better provide the better uh, quality of the germanium because of the uh, uh, reduction in the uh, mismatch between germanium and silicon. And the, also, uh, in situ boron doping was used to introduce the uh, the uh, P plus impurities in, uh, into germanium. Uh, actually, this is a fabrication uh, pro detail of the fabrication process, and the, uh, we, we optimize the uh, boron doping concentration. And present, we are using a 10 to the 20 uh, cubic centimeter. Uh, actually, this is a TM uh, photograph, and the, uh, uh, the uh, germanium uh, is patterned after growing uh, by MB, and uh, this uh, edge. Uh, work as the uh, uh, source uh, channel junction. And the similarly, uh, as, si as similar to uh, indium galmarsenide, we simply used aluminum oxide because we already know that the uh, aluminum oxide and also plasma post-oxidation provide a good interface for germanium and gate insulator. Uh, but still, we have to consider the lower uh, interface state density for silicon. So therefore, the PMA is needed. Actually, I will show the detail, but actually the, but the, the, uh, low, the appropriate PM, PMA uh, reduced the interface state between the silicon and the alumina interface. Uh, and the, uh, finally, the drain junction uh, drain, uh, is formed and the uh, device has been uh, completed. Uh, this is the ID VG characteristics with uh, changing the uh, strain uh, amount of the strain in, a, uh, in a, the silicon uh, channels. Uh, blood curve uh, has no strain. Uh, red one, 0.8 percent tensile strain, and uh, blue one has the 1.1 percent strain. And clearly, the higher strain increase the uh, uh, on current and also uh, low uh, reduce the uh, S factor, uh, which is very interesting. And also, uh, although I uh, didn't plot here, the gate current is reduced for strain silicon devices because actually the conduction band edge is lower with applying the tensile strain. So therefore, the uh, uh, band discontinuity of the uh, conduction band edge and the conduction band edge between the silicon and insulator increases. So therefore, actually the higher strain devices has also lower gate leakage, which is also beneficial to the uh, TFET. Uh, actually, this is the tensile strain dependence of the on current, look like this, and also this is the uh, S factor. And the, uh, when we look at the uh, minimum S factor, we can realize the uh, pretty low uh, S factor is observed for a higher tensile strain and almost 30 millivolt per decade is observed here. Uh, this is uh, PMA temperature dependence of the uh, performance. Uh, by with, with increasing the PM uh, temperature on current increases. Uh, this is actually the on-off ratio, and the on-off ratio increases attributed to the increase on the ion and the decrease the ion. And also, this factor significantly decreases look like that. Uh, the, as I mentioned, by using the 400 degrees CPMA, uh, 
uh, we can get the uh, uh, S factor less than 60 millivolt can be obtained for tensile strain uh, germanium TFET. In order to study the reason why this strong dependence of a PMM temperature on the S factor, we estimated the DIT uh, by using MOS capacitor for uh, silicon capacitor and also germanium capacitor. It turned out that the, uh, actually the germanium uh, MOS interface does not change so much with increasing the PMA, almost less than 10 to the 12th. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, interface state density between the alumina and the silicon has a very strong uh, PMA temperature dependence on the uh, 400 degrees C. Uh, annealing can realize the uh, almost 10 uh, times, uh, uh, 10 to the uh, 11th DIT can be obtained for this in interface. So therefore, uh, the strong PMA temperature dependence on a very low S factor after high temperature, uh, high PMA uh, treatment uh, is attributed to the reduction of the DIT in the silicon channel uh, and the higher uh, band modulation uh, uh, of the uh, 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 the uh, uh, after a PMA uh, needing. Sorry, uh, a higher band modulation of the uh, strain silicon uh, MOS interface. Uh, this is also temperature dependence, and also, uh, the strain silicon germanium uh, TFET are also, also very uh, less temperature dependent, which is very good sign, and the uh, low defect density. So therefore, this is good match with the uh, lower S factor of the uh, present devices. So therefore, uh, the uh, present um, in situ boron doping was very successful to realize the uh, less defect, sharp, uh, abrupt uh, source junction. And this is the last slide, uh, kind of the benchmark. I just took the on-off ratio as the horizontal axis, uh, vertical axis, and uh, this is a minimum S factor. Uh, finally, we should take the average S factor or I60, but at present we just took the minimum S factor and the our present 3.5 devices and also germanium strain silicon devices has the quite high on-off ratio, uh, which is simply attributed to their less defect density uh, by, by using the, uh, the uh, some uh, source uh, channel, uh, source uh, engineering for uh, intium gar night and the uh, germanium strain silicon interface. So uh, this, is the, uh, summary, this is a summary of my talk. Uh, I emphasize the uh, key technology of uh, realizing the high performance TFET, uh, the, some up, uh, appropriate ch channel and source materials, and also a steep and low defect uh, junction formation. Uh, those are quite a key issue for a better uh, performance of the TFET. Uh, the planar type engine gar mass and TFET uh, can be realized by using zinc diffusion source, which provide quite steep, steep and defectless uh, junction and the uh, 64 is factor and the higher uh, than the 10 to the 6 uh, power ion IOF can be realized. And also germanium source strain SOI TFET show the, uh, the better performance with increasing tensile strain and the higher uh, the ion IO ratio higher than 10 to the 60s, and also minimum S factor of the 29 uh, was obtained. Thank you very much for your kind attention. If there's not a burning question, I'd like you to move to the panel right now. Is there a burning question for Professor Takagi? It's a short one. I can go to 13 or 14 page where you show this temperature dependence of own current. Yeah, this page. Um, it's totally different than our subthreshold slope discussions. It's very interesting how your own current is changing with temperature, but I don't think uh, the uh, band cap dependence on temperature can explain it. Um, have you looked at your source drain Schottky barriers? I believe you have a Schottky barrier in your source or drain. That's the only thing that can cause that uh, temperature dependence. Uh, are, are you talking about uh, this region? Yes. Yeah, actually, uh, we think that it's very interesting because the 
uh, own current is uh, decreased with uh, decreasing the temperature. So therefore, we believe that is simply the increase of the band gap with decreasing the temperature. It would have a very, very small effect, that one. But Schottky barrier has the same signature. Not our external, but Schottky barrier. And it would actually show exactly this uh, behavior. But it, um, I'm not sure, but in that case, maybe we should, ob we should have also observed the temperature dependence in the uh, sub-threshold area. So therefore, I don't know why the only <laughs> on-current has the uh, kind of OK, it's very interesting. OK, we're good. Now I'd like to uh, thank uh, Professor Chicago one more time. Thank you.